Hi, my name is Jose Ogarin Solano, and this talk is basically talking about CLIs and APIs, especially the DNA center is CLI. As I mentioned before, I'm Jose Ogarin. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Altus. We are a Cisco partner focused on development technologies on top of Cisco hardware and software solutions. I'm an early DevNet adopter. I basically started this journey since the first DevNet zone at San Francisco 2014. And I've been obviously, you know, keeping uh, track of the certifications. So I'm a DevNet associate certification, uh, certificate. Um, I'm also collaboration automation, enterprise networking automation, uh, WebEx uh, development Auto, uh, certified, and also DevNet core. So I basically am a DevNet professional at the moment. And it's, it's been my passion for the past few years to focus on definite technologies and all that has to do with APIs. The title of this talk uh, basically takes inspiration from a song from a group called the Smashing Pumpkins. That song was The End is the Beginning is the End. I, I love that song and I think it's, it's actually uh, catching the title that we can use for this talk. The CLI is the API is the CLI. It's kind of like going full back circle from the CLI going to the API and then getting back to the CLI once again. The trend in the past few years has been to move to the APIs. Everything is, has to do through an API. We need to focus on APIs. Everybody talks about APIs. However, for a lot of the uh, use cases and for a lot of the things that we have to do in our day to day activities, the CLI is still a better tool than actually going through the API or even having to go to the, a web interface or a graphical interface of sorts. In the case, for example, of a web interface, it's definitely easier to capture information from a CLI, it's faster. And if you want to integrate with other tools, doing it through the CLI brings you that flexibility then that you know that you can get well you're doing that uh, through a web interface or a GUI right in the other case for example if you're comparing using the CLI to uh, to, uh, to that API completely is that starting with the CLI it's much easier than just using the API the CLI, you basically install it or you already have it and you just go ahead and put your commands. Well, you know, obviously with the API, you have to go ahead, program the script and you do all those sort of things that you have to do with an, with an API. We have tools that simplify that like SDKs, which we'll cover in a minute, but still you have to go ahead, understand the SDK, program using that SDK. So it's it's harder to get started uh, using an SDK than just having a CLI tool right at your fingertips that you can use and start doing some stuff around there. So the CLI, yeah, it's, it's kind of, everybody talks about almost like the CLI is going to disappear. However, what I'm saying, it's actually the CLI is here to stay because it's, it's better for automation than a web interface, and it's easier to get started. So it's just basically another tool in your tool belt. And we have very good industry examples. For example, um, with some of the leading cloud providers, they have a very robust and best APIs for, to manage that infrastructure from Azure, Azure to AWS to Google Cloud Platform. All of them have great APIs and all of them obviously have their consoles in, in web so you can do all those operations in the web. But the three of them also have great CLI tools and system administrators and developers and network administrators use them daily to do some of the tasks to either create a new computer instance, to bring down an instance, to you know, make some changes, reserve an IP, add a new DNS entry. So basically all the, 
almost all the tools or all the operations that you can do through the console at the web, you can do it through the API. But more importantly for this talk, you can do it through the CLI as well. And these are great examples of exactly, it's not like, hey, the web console is gonna replace every single tool that we have out there. And it's not like, hey, the API, it's gonna replace everything. It's, you gotta have a good web or web interface in this case to support some of the use cases. You gotta have an API to, some, to support one of the more complex integration cases. But for a lot of the daily day day to day activities, having a CLI is a much much better solution. Regarding the network APIs, so we have obviously uh, device APIs. For example, we talk about RESTConf, we talk about Net NetConf, we talk about gRPC, and in the controller area. Mostly when we talk about the northbound APIs that we use to interface with a controller, we talk about REST APIs. We can use any of these APIs or all of those APIs to actually create a CLI that talks to a device using RESTConf, that talks to a device using NetConf, or actually uh, that uses some of the APIs in a controller to actually integrate or interface with that um, particular device or controller. So yeah, we have a lot of flexibility right now. We have a lot of APIs, but on top of those APIs, we can definitely build um, a CLI that simplifies our day-to-day -day activities. In the case of this presentation, we're gonna focus completely on Cisco DNA Center platform. It's one of the power courses of Cisco right now. And as you can see, it supports a lot of APIs from version 128 that has 168 endpoints to 130 that has 180, uh, 133 that has 252, 226 and 131, and up to 211 that has already 260 API endpoints. So it's a very robust, a very bad API um, that you can use, that you can leverage to do a lot of operations into your network from doing device replacements with, you know, in collaboration with TAC to doing network discovery, confirmation templates, network help, assurance. It's a very robust API that you can basically leverage to manage your whole network. But again, to get started, it's, it's a bit tricky sometimes if you have to you know, manage the authentication and then figure out exactly the parameters that you have to send for some of these operations. It's not as easy as just having like a CLI that you can go ahead and use and start doing some stuff uh, very, very quickly. And in that sense, in the case of DNA Center, we have an API. So we have um, an a, a, again, a robust API with in 260 endpoints. And it's easy to talk to that API from any language, either Python or Go or Node. JavaScript, some of the other languages that are out there, it's easy to talk to that API because it's it's based on standards. It's based on a REST API. It's The problem though, it's, it's still developer oriented. So if you're just a network engineer trying to get a grasp of what the things that you can do through the API, uh, you'll first have to go through a Python course or to a Go course or you know a JavaScript course to understand exactly the things that you can use in that language and then try to use the API. To simplify that process a little bit, it's uh, the reason that Cisco um, came up with a Python SDK. And it's a great SDK once you, you know, got a grasp of, of the things that you wanna do and you have the experience with the technology, especially with you know, uh, Python, you can use this SDK to simplify that workflow. And it will speed up the things that you can do a lot. I mean, you don't have to worry that much about authentication or you don't have to worry about that much about the little uh, things here and there in the API. You can basically use the SDK and that will simplify from a script that has, I don't know, 60 lines if you're doing it through an API. You can take that from 60 lines to probably 
20 lines doing the SDK. But again, it's a developer-oriented tool, so we still need to take it a step further uh, so that the, um, a network engineer can use a tool like this to start, you know, uh, seeing the stuff that he can do from the uh, from the from the CLI. So let me introduce you to Cisco DNA Center Platform CLI. It supports versions one to eight to two one one, and it also has debugging cap capability. So if you're actually comfortable with the CLI, then after that it's easy for you to try to use the debug and understand exactly the operations that are being done in the API. So if you have a more complex scenario, then from the CLI, you can take that to the API or to the SDK, and then, you know, basically use the power of the code to simplify that whole workflow. So what I'm gonna do is basically take you through the uh, DNA Center CLI and show you exactly what can be done from this CLI. So, if I don't give it any options, I'm just gonna get a general help with the information of the different variables that I can pass uh, to the CLI. If I use the help option, I'm gonna get the different examples of the stuff or the uh, stuff that I have here from it. Application policy, clients, command runner, compression templates, also all the things that I can do in the web interface, all the things that I can do through the API, I can do it through this CLI. Let's say I'm interested in devices, so I can get a, again get some help from devices and see exactly all the operations that I can use through the device API. So it's uh, you know get the module count, get the different modules, get the device list, which I'm actually going to use right now to get um, to get information of the different devices that I have in that DNA center. And again, I could do this using the web interface, I could do this using the API, but I already have a, a CLI here that it's much faster to start, and especially if I want to then, let's say, uh, get this information in a better format, it's easier for me to use some other tools available at my terminal, at my CLI, and I can see exact, for example, in this case, get the output. I can analyze that output and say, hey, let's see, I can see the different devices. I can see all that detail right here at my fingertips. And again, I can use this and use the different tools that I have at my disposal. And let's say that I want to get the type of the device only and uh, software version of that, de of that device. Okay, I can get the software version, for example, in this case. And I can very easily get the different devices that I have and the software version of those devices. I can, for example, if I'm interested in actually integrating this with other tools, I can pass that output and get it more in this kind of format. And using other tools, for example, I can use uh, other tools that I have here to actually send this same information and again using the API then use that and send for example a message to WebEx teams from the same API from the same sorry from the same CLI passing that information to different tools that I have at my disposal in this uh, uh, command line on this terminal, and then again using another CLI tool to actually pass that information to WebEx teams. So as you can see right now here, I'm basically, and you can see my the messages getting to my WebEx teams. So it's very easy for me to actually get that information. And as you can see, for example, I'm getting the count of 
the devices that I have with their software version. So I get 10 Cisco access points with version 185, uh, one wireless LAN controller with, base, with version 18, sorry, 88, uh, two catalyst switches, one another catalyst switch. So very easily I can get the information that I have in DNA center, getting it through the CLI, and then passing that information to WebEx Teams, which if I was to do this using um, the web interface, it's, it's not a, it has to be manually. You have to capture the information and pass it through the web exchange space. Um, and if I have to do it uh, through an API, I have to go ahead and understand the API that, um, that DNA Center API, get that information, authenticate to that API, then get the information from the DNA, the web exchange CLI API authenticate to that. So it, it gets tricky after a while to actually do this simple task. Let me show you another example. I can get, for example, the configuration templates projects that I have here. So let's say I'm just interested in getting those uh, configuration templates. And I will get, again, very easily just the projects that I have in DNA Center CLI. As you can see, for example, I get test, APU, Cloud Day and templates, I get onboarding configuration. So very easily I can get information like that. Um, again, getting through the, the um, CLI and the same as before, I can get that information and send it through to WebEx Teams. And in this case, the same, I call the DNA Center CLI I get the configuration templates, I get the projects, I pass this through JQ, which is the tool that I'm using to process the, um, the JSON output. Then I do a little bit of uh, parsing here to remove some of the uh, things that I don't want. And then just the same as before, I send that information to WebEx Teams. Right again, from the CLI, the previous example, what I did is basically take uh, the CLI, get some information, send it to WebEx Teams, and in that case was device information. But very quickly, without changing code, without doing any extra stuff, I can do the same workflow, but actually send information about, um, in this case, the projects that I have, uh, the conversion projects that I have in, in WebEx Teams. And finally, for example, in this case, obviously also it can get some information about the devices that I have. I can get the same device list. And let's say what I'm interested, interested in this case, it's basically getting the ID of a device. And I'll use command runner in this case, which again, it's a very good tool that we have. So I can automate this using the CLI to send some configuration, some commands to some of the devices that I have here. So again, I'm gonna use command runner, see exactly what op op uh, options that I have in command runner, which in this case is run, read, only commands on devices. I can again ask for some help to see exactly what other options I have there. And I see that I, what I need, it's my device UIDs. So I'm gonna paste the device ID that I had. And with commands, I'm gonna basically send a show IP interface brief. I can get that task ID that I get from DNA Center. And again, just using the CLI without having to program anything, without having to uh, go to that uh, interface, I can get some help and see exactly what I can do with that task ID that I got from the previous command. So I'm gonna get task 
by ID. I know that it's task ID, the option that I have to give it. And as I can see, I get, a, again, the same response that I get from the API, the same information that I will get from the CLI, from the API or the web interface I can get from the CLI. So I can download that. And let's say I'm interested in actually sending that information to getting that file via, again, I'm interested in sending that information to the web scene space. Very easily, I can get information from the API using this CLI. Well, I have a problem in this case. The demo, the demo gaps were in. We're not helping here, but well, basically in this case, I can take the same information from this file, this output, and then uh, send it to the web scene space. Getting back to my presentation, there's a lot of tools that you can use for this Python, uh, for doing this in Python. You have, for example, Click, Click, Darkup, and Salmon, which are tools that you can use to create CLIs on top of the uh, scripts that you can that you have. My Call to action is basically um, get familiar with the technology, understand the devices and the control technologies that you have and its integration points. So you can see if there's also maybe um, the possibility to integrate it using API SDKs or CLIs. So if you have a CLI, uh, my recommendation is basically start there. It's a way to get familiar with uh, the operations that you can do through the API and to actually open your mind and say, hey, maybe if I do this um, in, uh, using the API, maybe I have this task that I can uh, you know, base, do through the API, uh, then you can start thinking maybe I have this very complex scenario where the CLI is not the best tool, but now I understand that these different pieces I can do through the CLI which means I can do them through the API, which helps me to understand exactly what I need to do and actually solve that complex use case. Uh, the CLI is definitely the, the easier uh, path. It's uh, more familiar to us as network engineers because we've been managing CLIs for quite a bit. And again, it, it's just a very easy way to actually get started. In this case, and finally, honestly, enjoy your life. Um, through automation, you can uh, use the API and the CLI to simplify the workflow and helps you quite a bit to actually just understand um, what automation is and the different use cases yeah, that you can uh, use from there. It's been said that the CLI is almost dead, but I went saying here is that the CLI is dead, but long live the CLI. We can build with APIs new CLI tools. We can use APIs to create more powerful CLIs. Uh, we can uh, use the APIs to actually create command line interfaces that are more geared towards our own workflow, to what our company is doing, and to what our team is doing. So not only stick with uh, you know, the traditional CLI that you can get in a, in a device, but creating our own CLIs that integrate with other platforms and make it easier to, for uh, network engineers to start playing and start actually getting familiar with the, with the APIs. My final call of action is research, find out if there's uh, CLIs that you can use for some of the uh, uh, interfaces or some of the uh, applications that you are using. And if you found a CLI, you can definitely start there and start doing some automation with scripts 
and stuff like that, just basically in U using the CLI without having to go to some Python or some other programmability course. Thank you. That's all from me.